Well, uh, according to Martinus, all living beings are eternal living beings. And uh, many people say that's religious. It's a kind of belief. Do, do, do we have a, an afterlife or do we live eternally? But uh, you could also look uh, somewhat more scientific upon the case. And I mean, there's only two possibilities. You can have one life or you can have eternal life or life can have had a beginning, or life do not have a beginning. And who can prove one is right or wrong? And uh, Martino thinks that you cannot create something out of nothing. You cannot create energy out of nothing. You cannot create life out of nothing. So you ca it's impossible if once, several hundred million years after Big Bang, by, by, by accident, life was created. You cannot explain scientifically how life or consciousness came around from nothing. So in a way, I think the argument with energy, the energy, the energy just exists, it has always existed and will always exist. To, to me, that's the most logical, that also the phenomena, consciousness and life is also uh, eternal. So Martinus' whole work is based on this view of eternity. His uh, work is called Martinus Cosmology, Martinus Spiritual Science, but he also called it the eternal world picture. And the whole world picture is very, very logical, but that is because it's based on eternity. The, everything is uh, observed from the viewpoint of the uh, eternity. So, but we have a body, we have a physical body, and um, in Martinus' analysis, it's very important to distinguish between creative things and eternal things. You have a self, an I, you have a consciousness, which is eternal. And then you have a body that is created. So the, bo the body has a beginning and an end. And that's the big scientific question. Can consciousness only exist in a physical body? Or do consciousness have an independent existence outside the physical body? And there are lots of uh, research in near-death experiences. And there you can see they can have an experience outside the body. So I guess there would be much more research, scientific examinations that will show that consciousness has an independent existence outside the physical body. And then if you only have one life, the life is very unjust, it's illogical, Ill illogical and it's not an expression of love. But if you have a, um, the perspective of reincarnation or an eternal life, then there is a justice because when you compare a lot of lives, you can be rich in one life and uh, poor in another. You can be healthy and you can be ill in another life. So if you have the whole eternity, everything, you will reach an equilibrium. So it's uh, equalized. So from this point of view, life is just. And it is also very logical. And it is also expression of, 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 of the highest love. So you get, but many people who are materialists, they are very much afraid of dying. And when maybe their husband or wife has died or their children, they become very, very unhappy because they think uh, th there is no afterlife. But with an eternal viewpoint, it's not so tra tragical. And Martinus um, says what happens when you die, that is that the five senses do not work anymore, but your consciousness is still working. So in that way, death is the biggest surprise of life. Because the first thing you experience when you're dead, that is, you're alive. And Martino says, it's so wonderful. And you also have many reports from the, these near-death experiences. And they, they sort of confirm Martino's analysis. So it's so wonderful to die. And you could compare the, summer, the, the, the stay in the spiritual world as a summer holiday between two lives. Or the physical world is the school of life. Then you go in the first grade, have summer holiday, second grade, summer holiday, third grade, summer holiday. For every year in school, you develop and learn a lot. In the same way, in the school of life, you have one incarnation, and then you have a summer holiday. It's so wonderful to, to die. It's so wonderful to stay in the spiritual world. Martinez says a little bit humoristic. It's good when you don't know how wonderful it is in the spiritual world. But if we really knew it, we will commit suicide immediately to get into the spiritual world. It, it, you cannot imagine how wonderful uh, it is in the spiritual world. And you can have so many wishes that are not fulfilled in this life. 
but then they will be fulfilled in the next incarnation and next incarnation. So it's such wonderful. Mar Martinez guarantees all wishes are fulfilled. You just have to have some patience. But um, Martinus is uh, speaking about the physical body, and then we have the self, the I, and the superconsciousness, which is eternal. You sort of have an eternal body, and all the information that you collect in all life, all your talents are stored in this eternal body. So uh, you, you, you become a, a master through training and practice. So to Martinus, the, the motor, the driving force in evolution is not mutations and survival of the fittest, but it is training praxis. It is you, you get every time when you've made an experience, you have developed because they are not lost when the um, physical body uh, goes under when it, it's uh, gone. But all these talents and all these information you've collected during your life are stored in this eternal body. And uh, also, if you go to the question about health, you could ask, why are some children born handicapped? They are born with, with illness. That is because they have destroyed their health through bad habits in previous lives. In this lifetime, they say, I guess at least five sins. If you drink alcohol, if you smoke tobacco, if you eat very much fat, and if you eat sugars, and if you don't exercise, then there's a big risk that you will get diabetes too, or you will get uh, in your circulation and heart, and you will get illnesses there because you have had bad habits. But you create a, a, a talent kernel when you have bad habits. And if you have bad habits in one life, you can more or less damage an organ. But then Martinus says, you have also damaged your talent for creating a new healthy organ. So if you are born with an organ that doesn't work that well, it's because you have destroyed it through bad habits in previous lives. So you sort of have a health capital. So you transfer your health state from one life to the another life. For that reason, it's very inspiring for a more healthy life. Maybe you could accept that you would die from lung cancer or some other heart disease 10 or 20 or 30 years before, then the problem is solved because I'm dead and then there's nothing. But the problem is not solved because if you have destroyed your organs, you will be born with weak or defect organs in next life. But how do you then become healthy again? And then Martino's explanation is the way to back to normality is just simply to live normal, live in a normal way. So that is also very good to know. But Martina says it's not only physical things that destroy your health. In a way, he says the most important thing about your health is the way that you are thinking. And on the deepest level, our thinking is the cause to all uh, illnesses. Because when you think in a wrong way, you, you, you disturb your organs. Every thought has a certain wavelength frequency, but also all organs have a wavelength or frequency. So some types of thoughts have an effect on some organs and other types of thoughts. But in general, if you are angry, you are envious, all different kind of negative feelings, you, you feel that you're treated in an unjust way, you're unsatisfied, you are angry, you are annoyed, and so on. This creates sicknesses, illnesses. He has pointed out the cause to some few diseases, but not to all diseases. But what he points out, that is, if you are pleased with life, you think life is wonderful, even if you have problems and you have pain and sickness and a lot of things, when you understand, that helps you in your evolution. When you have felt the pain on yourself, you can feel with others. So that makes you more human, uh, humane. So um, if you can be grateful to all pleasant things and all, all unpleasant things, then, then you get this thought world, I'm, I'm satisfied, I'm pleased, I'm grateful. And that is the best way to create uh, perfect health.